You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for Teen Mom. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest Teen Mom news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now... Picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues. It's After Buzz TV for Teen Mom. Yay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Mari Fagel here, and I'm joined by Ed tonight. Ed, how are you? I'm doing okay, Mari. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and as I was watching last night's show, I knew exactly what our debate tonight was going to be. Because last week, our big debate was Sarah and her grandmother, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, you know, Sophia's grandmother and that whole situation. Uh-huh. Can you tell me, can you tell me, which what's our big debate going to be tonight? Oh, God. Okay, so uh, it must be something, you, you know me so well, so it must yep. have to do with what I tend to be predisposed to, uh, to have an opinion about. And I'm going to guess, because I got issues, right, with this. I got issues all over the place. But I'm going to say probably Macy and Ryan. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> As I was watching it, I knew that you were going to be totally strong and on Ryan's side. So yeah. let's just get straight into that debate because <laughs> we're going to have to devote some time to it before we go to the other girls tonight. Okay, cool. Let me tell you where I stand. Wait, Let why do you get to talk first? Because you're the you host. Can make your case. You, you, wait, do you get to talk for, first because you're the host, or just because you're a woman and you can have a baby and I can't? For both of those reasons, <laughs> and because I have a good case, I'm going to present my side, and then you can rebut. Okay. <laughs> okay. No problem. <laughs> okay, and actually, you might be able to convince me because when I first started thinking about it, and basically. She, on Bentley's actual birthday, invited Ryan to go to the aquarium, and he declined. So when she asked for him to go trick-or-treating with her Uh and to have a couple hours for them to go trick-or-treating, I thought, and he said, well, I wasn't allowed to be with Bentley on his birthday. I thought to myself, she invited you to go to the aquarium, and you declined. Yeah. But then... Later on, the where I might see Ryan's side is where she asked, can she take him trick-or-treating? And he said, well, you can join us as we go trick-or-treating, yeah. which is essentially the same thing she did. So I get that. I get that point. He said, well, if you want to go trick-or-treating with him, that's fine, but you've got to join me and my family. And right. that's basically what she said on his birthday was, if you want to spend time with Bentley on his birthday, that's fine, but you've got to go with me and Kyle. Right. So that's the only time I will concede to Ryan. But <laughs> otherwise, I think that his whole family was really riling him up. His mother was, like, in tears. And at the birthday party, they were so upset. And they keep everyone around at him is telling him to take her to court. Yeah. But I thought that they had a fine arrangement, and so that is where I stand. She did invite him on his birthday, so that's where I I think it was a couple hours of trick-or-cheating. He should have let her. Yeah. Well, uh, you're right. There's all kinds of issues going on in there. Um, some of them are, I think, matters of right and wrong, and some of them are not so, so much matters of right and wrong, just uh, different ways to do things. Um, first, regarding Ryan's family, um, I completely 100% agree with the dad. Uh, and remember, the whole reason that they are apart is because they can't get along. Or, or And it could be, you know, sometimes people are not together because they just don't want to be. But most of the time it's because they have uh, it, the inability to sort of get along has presented itself. <clears throat> And so it really doesn't make good sense to think that they're going to now be able to co-parent together and cooperate and have everything be fine. So what what does make sense is that you have some sort of uh, outside authority uh, that 
is something that they have to follow. And that would be a signed court order, uh, 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 an agreement that they stipulate to, you know, that they both agree to the terms and then they have committed formally as, as law. When a judge signs a court order, you know, and, and there's like a custody arrangement or whatever, it actually is law. Uh, it's it, that's how much power the judge has when a judge signs a court order into it, they, they're making it a law and the law applies specifically to the individuals that it refers to but is you know, when you break that so i have a question <clears throat> what would that court order specifically say about holidays at least birthday halloween what would it say okay um so for example uh a court order can say, the the rule is it can say whatever the parties agree for it to say, by the way, but there does there are some sort of uh, sort of de facto standards that are out there. One example would be I know lots of custody arrangements where on Christmas Day, on even years, one parent, say for example, the mom would have the child stay with them from Christmas Eve to Christmas morning all the way until noon, right, and then the child would in one way or another be transferred to the other parent for the remainder of Christmas Day. And then the following year, it would be flip-flopped, where then the other parent would have the child Christmas Eve. So uh, a lot of courts and, and a lot of mediators recommend, and then the parties often agree, to alternating things. One year, the kid's birthday, the father has. The next year, the kid's birthday, the mother has. Odd, even, et cetera, things like that. Um, when things are more... Uh, you know, manageable between the parents, then what Ryan was trying to do initially is can be totally acceptable, where the first half of the birthday is with the mom, and then say, hey, your daddy's coming to get you for your, you know, this half of your birthday tonight, and then, you know, goes off with the dad. It's all about what they can agree to. Now, in this situation, Macy complained that Ryan didn't ask to see him on his birthday until the, the morning of. Um, but they did talk. They, she did try to talk to him about, hey, what are we going to do for the birthday? And see, I remember him saying that he wanted to do it separately. Now, the mistake that was probably made was that they didn't hammer out the actual details of what that would look like before the day came around. And so on one hand, it was a little bit unreasonable for him to expect that she should just uh, cancel the plan she had because she hadn't heard from him uh, and just let him take his, his son, you know, when she already had plans. <clears throat> But, you know, at the same time, it's it's kind of up to her if the the agreement that they had says that she gets him. You know, she doesn't have to do it. Um, the part that when they go next to the scene where it's Halloween or they're talking about Halloween and she's saying, hey, can I come and and take him for a couple hours? Yeah, I, I mean, I, again, Mari, I kind of see it both ways. I do see, well, it would be nice of him. It's only a couple hours, not that big of a deal. But he was already sort of salty about the fact that she just he felt that she shouldn't have just said no to on the birthday to him to the child going with Ryan. Um, and and the I don't think I thought, yeah, go ahead. the problem I thought was both of them were being passive aggressive. I think the reason he didn't let her go trick or treating, like you're saying, was because he was upset about the birthday party. And I normally really like Macy and I think she's very mature, but I thought she was being passive aggressive because when he refused she right up, she said, you know, I'll remember this, and the next time that you want me to pick him up early when you have to work, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. And then at the actual birthday party, when he said no, again, she goes, well, I'm the mom, I'm going to do it anyways. Right. Well, and, and I thought that was passive aggressive. Well, it's it really, it's directly aggressive. It's actively aggressive. Yeah. Um, that's <laughs> a threat. She's threatening him to say, if you do this, then when you need to change, you want to see uh, Bentley... Uh, on, on, a, on a time when your work schedule changes, then I'm going to remember this and I'm not going to do it because you're not doing this. And in my opinion, this is where we get into the destructive part of the relationship. This is why they must have a predefined written agreement so that they don't, there's no discussion anymore. Hammer it all out in some sort of a mediated situation with, and then have a judge say, okay, you agree to this. Okay, you agree to this. This is what the custody is going to look like for the next five years or until one of you guys bring the other one back to court. Boom, done. And then there's no reason to talk about, no reason to argue because they can't get along. They were doing what I call tit for tat. And I, in my opinion, tit for tat never works. It makes for a horribly destructive relationship. She, here she was complaining about uh, him not letting her, 
have Bentley for a couple hours, right? And so she's objecting to that behavior. He she said, "Let me have him." She and he said, "No." So it doesn't really make sense. It's a definition of hypocrisy for her to then turn around and say, "Okay, well then I'm going to do the very thing that I don't like that you're doing." And so it's a no win, and you never never win. It never ends. You're constantly just getting, yeah. you know, paying back for the other one, and it's it's destructive, and. Somebody has to, and the unfortunate part is that in order for the cycle to stop, somebody has to be willing to take a loss. Somebody has to be willing to have something wrong done to them and not do it back. And maybe more than one time. And that way, you know, you stop the cycle of it. Well, I guess this debate will actually be much calmer than last week because you've kind of won me over because at first when his parents were bringing up court, I thought that that was a little out of line and that they were riling him up. Right. But now you've kind of made me understand that I feel I thought originally him threatening to bring her to court or them going to court would lead to a lot more drama, which yeah. it may and it probably will. Yeah. But I guess then in the long run, it will cut down on the drama because then there can't be drama. They have to follow it. Right. And, and don't forget that court doesn't necessarily mean courtroom because the when you when you take someone to court, um, so what Ryan will have to do is he has to file what's called a petition to establish parental relationship. Once and that's going to cost him in California, it costs about three hundred and some dollars to just open that, start that, okay. And then you then you file a motion to establish uh, uh, visitation and custody, and then that's when you actually get a court date, okay. But the court will require that they go see a mediator, which they've already done. But all they have to do, they don't ever have to step foot in a courtroom if they can, with the mediator, agree. And that's what the word stipulate. They can agree to what it should look like. Uh, then it gets put in writing, and then they sign it, and then it gets submitted to the the clerk of the court. And the clerk of the court says to the judge, "Hey, these two people agreed." It judge does not care what it says, uh, you know, as long as it doesn't say anything illegal, and just signs it and says, "Okay, cool. If they agree, then I'm fine with that." And um, and then now you have this thing set in stone. So so in other words. Yeah, the court, the the way the dad was talking and the way the brother was talking seemed really sort of like, God, why you got to go to court? What are you going to get a lawyer now? And, you know, it doesn't have to be all that. All you're doing is realizing that, hey, I can't get along with this girl and she can't get along with me no matter what we try. We got to get somebody else to help us figure it out and then write it down and then it's done. I will say one thing quickly, though, before they got into all this drama, yeah. their first drop off, every time that they do a handover, I feel like there's sexual tension oh, yeah. between Macy and Ryan. Oh, yeah. No, that's what I wrote in my notes, by the way. I wrote the part about tit for tat never works, but at the top of my list, and I see this every single time that Macy every is looking time. at Every time she's looking at I think, okay, here's what I think. She is, she is so horribly emotionally divided. I think she genuinely loves how, uh, you know, Kyle is with Bentley. It's amazing how great that situation is yeah. for her and, and for her son. He's this really calm, stable, you know, good person. I don't feel like she has the sort of uh, chemistry with him as I agree. that she does with Ryan, right? So that's why here she she gets into a situation where she's uh, handing Bentley back and forth. And even if she doesn't really totally want to be back with Ryan. I see the tension. I feel like she at least wants him to want her. You know, she at least... Totally. Is... She, even, she even said, and I'm going to bring Kyle to the birthday party and you'll bring, you know, yeah. whoever you're dating at the time. Yeah, I saw that. That was like a little jab, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But And, and the other thing, totally. and you may, not have, uh, you may not have picked up on this, but this is uh, something I picked up mostly on this episode. To me, when she invited Ryan to come be with Kyle and her and Bentley to go to the zoo or whatever it was, I'm like, dude, are you serious? He's not going to do that. He's not that. He's not all chummy with the guy. It's not his best friend. And he was instantly not okay with that. Okay, He's already met the guy, and he initiated that part, right? He said, hey, listen, if you're going to be with this guy, he's going to be around my son. I want to meet him. And that went well. But I think the reason why he didn't, he, why he immediately said, no way I'm not coming down there to go spend the day with you and your boyfriend and my son. And he immediately said no to that. And then when, um, when uh, what was it they were talking about? Oh, the way he was looking at them at the party 
where uh, yeah. Kyle was really all you know involved. You know, he's there with Macy and Bentley's you know with the mom most of the time, of course, because that's who he's like more attached to. And but Kyle's right there, so Ryan's kind of you know alienated from that situation. I think they're in a in a way, Ryan. If, even if he doesn't fully want to be back with Macy, there's something about it. He wants he wants her not to be with anybody else or wants her to still want him or something's going on there. There's some jealousy or yeah. something there. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we'll have to see how it unfolds, and it sounds like next episode they'll discuss even further about going to court. But I wanted to talk with you about Amber because, for once, I have to – applaud MTV for finally, finally okay. acknowledging and addressing the fact that these teen moms aren't normal teen moms because they are famous, Uh-oh. because they're on MTV. And no one ever touches on that. They never say anything. Macy's sitting there with an iPad in a nice house because she gets money from MTV. No one says anything. Finally, this episode, we see what fame can do and how these moms are different. That- and I felt so bad for Amber because she is constantly harassed, yelled at, cussed at, told she's a bad mom by everyone in her neighborhood. Uh, I could only imagine what that's like. And now I'm starting to understand why she is having a total mental breakdown. Uh, absolutely. We got to give props to uh, DJ Jesse. Got a shout out because he's the one that said also, he goes, yeah, you know what? He goes, they never show that. And this girl, uh, they showed it in this episode. But um, you know what? That is what I noticed. I began to empathize with Amber more than I ever have yeah. before because of this. However, I also became a, a little more judgmental of her in this situation too. Um, you know, knowing we know what happens right after all this, where she really gets in to, to difficult situation um, with her, her own self image and a suicide attempt, right? She's the one that, that uh, had that happen. Correct. Yes, yes. Okay. Sir. And so And I have some more news and gossip on okay, that. Okay. Well. Okay. And so for her like to what if you're, you know, imagine the situation. I'm sure you did, Mari, like you're living in your house, inside your house. People drive by, they blow their horns, they're yelling out you're a bad mom. You know, you don't even go outside. When you do go outside, they confront you in public. She's harassed in public. That has got and she already has made mistakes that make it difficult for her to to freely just be who she wants to be, you know, at times she wants to totally be a mom and be around her mom. <clears throat> it's got to, it must be such a mental shackle like you can't believe. I, I felt so bad for her. Um, but at, here's the other thing, and, and I think this might, this is where I was a little judgmental on her, where, and it might be a little bit of maturity thing, but she said to that one realtor, she said, yeah, I've already talked to 15 realtors, Okay. And she's been, you know, seeing houses every day and she's being really picky about the house. Now, I can understand being picky about the neighborhood. All right. Because you got a little girl. But I'm thinking that, guess what? If I'm a parent alienated from my child and what I need in order to have them back and I want them back is to just have a place for us, then, you know, as long as it's not in like some neighborhood where they're going to be shooting me through the walls or something crazy, then I'm going to take really quickly what I can get, what I can afford and what I can get. If it's a fixer no, upper. No, no, yeah, no. Because why? she's trying to start a new life. She said, <clears throat> I'm trying to start fresh for us. This is for me and my daughter. And it's, and it's, it's not only safety, like it's a safe neighborhood. It, it is a neighborhood that people don't know who she is, and people aren't going to find her easily. And also, is it a place that's like comfortable living for her and her daughter? So I don't think it's wrong that she's taking her time. Yeah, well, see, that's what that's what I said. Like I said, and I admit it's it's a judgment, and and I and I could be wrong there, um, but I just felt like she had too many excuses for not having Leah. I I'm like, you know, stop all the excuses. Stop yeah. saying you need to call all the right places, and stop, you know, forget all that. Just get her. Just just get her. You know, clean up the room. I understand you know. that because yeah. at first when she kept saying it's so hard being away from my daughter, I was thinking, wait, did she already lose custody or is there some sort of you no know, contact order already between her and Gary? And I was so confused. And then I realized the reason why she wasn't seeing her daughter was because she didn't want to go outside of her home. But still, Gary could have brought her over like they finally did in the end. So I yeah. agree. She was kind of like not seeing her daughter. And I think that's what her cousin brought up. She said, you yeah. need to be with your daughter and not with, you know, other boys and things. Right. But the thing is, I feel bad judging for this episode because I agree, for once, 
I found so much empathy for her yeah. because she wasn't even angry this episode. The reason why it's hard for me to empathize with her is because she always is yelling and so angry. Yeah, she blames, yeah. This episode, every single scene, I don't know if you noticed, but literally every single scene that she was in this episode, she was crying. Oh, I didn't, I didn't point. notice that. That's interesting. Yeah, I, you, you have to. When she said the stuff about being harassed in public, when she said the stuff about people driving by and calling her a bad mom, that stuff... She already feels like a bad mom because of the mistakes she's made. She's got already got these negative things in her mind and in her life. And to have people just sort of confirm that and beat that into her, I'm telling you, I, you know, like I said, yes, I, you know, I judge her and say, hey, too many excuses. But at the same time, I say, God, I, I, you know, I can't imagine how difficult that must be to try to hold yourself up in the midst of all that. Really hard. Yeah. Well, I have some more news and gossip on her and what's going on with her right now. So we'll we'll hold off on that. But let's talk about um, maybe the less interesting storylines of the episode. I thought definitely Macy and Amber were the most interesting. Right. Caitlin, for me, <laughs> is never that interesting. <laughs> she doesn't have the baby in her life anymore. And right. uh, it's So it's basically just following two teens who are engaged, you know, in... West Virginia or wherever they are. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah. The whole Their whole scene was just them looking for a job. He gets his beauty job. She gets her boutique job. And the only note title they wrote was, well, they better get their job. Right. Because even though they don't have resumes, they're bringing fame to these businesses because they're MTV stars. And guess who's going to want to order pizza? They're going to want to be on MTV. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. Tyler's so, going to deliver my pizza. And, and I get to go buy something yeah. in the boutique from Caitlin. Yeah, that's that's pretty funny. Yeah. And Pizza Dan just got a whole free advertisement for about 30 minutes on MTV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chef Dan. Yep, it sure did. Yeah, that's pretty good for business. Yeah. Pretty awesome. But uh, I, I agree with you. It. You know, I watched I watched part of one of the after shows, and there's Caitlin sitting there next to Farah and sitting there next to Macy, and I'm thinking, you're not actually a teen mom, you know, you, you are, but you're not. And yeah, then I, and then yeah. I see in this episode that she's she's like apparently regularly babysitting her little brother. I'm like, you guys yeah. got a kid anyway, you know. And I mean, I don't want to be flippant, but in my mind, I kind of yeah. thought, well, you should just kept yours. You could have just, <laughs> just you know been raising kids because guess what? No. No, 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 no. I will always stand up for Caitlin and her decision to adopt because of the way that she was raised and her parents and everything. So I definitely think Carly has a better life now because she's with parents who are financially secure and ready because already they can't even pay for themselves without the kid. So I will always defend her decision to adopt. I just think that as a viewer, her story is not as entertaining or dramatic because she doesn't actually have the baby in her life. But I always will stand by the fact that I thought that was a good decision. Right, right. And and you should. And it's great because, again, that's one of those things where I cannot imagine how difficult that must be. And, and them being so young and po- possibly having doubts maybe daily if they did the right thing. But then, you know, maybe they go to sleep and think I did the right thing. Um, she obviously came to some realizations just taking care of her brother and having to pay bills that, wow, this is really hard. How much harder would it be with a kid? Um, but. And remember my prediction from uh, from previous shows that Tyler is going to uh, he's going to come into his own and some fatherly instincts will kick in and he's going to get his daughter back. Um, you know, not maybe maybe the, who knows if that's the best thing or not, but I, that's just my prediction because I got to tell you I have never been so impressed as pressed I am with an 18 year old kid as I am with this Tyler kid i mean i know i am so impressed so with how, how patient he is how mature and then on top of all of it to be encouraging and he is encouraging quick like uh you know she said i don't even you know the girl the lady at the store wants my resume i don't even have a resume and he's you know his first reaction was sort of automatic right like you don't have a resume and then, but he immediately followed it up with hey you know everybody's got to start somewhere or he said something yeah. really positive and there was another thing where you know she's wondering how come the lady hasn't called me back and then you know he's saying just positive stuff like don't worry give it you know what give it another day or two you know you know, just let's wait. Don't don't freak out now. And then he gets yeah. the call and he, you know, he sort of sort of, uh, you know, celebrates not too much because, you know, he knows that she's right there wanting a job but didn't get it. And he's just so encouraging. I love Tyler. Yeah, he's I mean, awesome. I never have enough good things to say about him. And I'm always shocked to see from where he came from to who he became. Yeah, I just, again, I'm just very impressed. Um, and, oh, the other thing was how well, remember when he put uh, when he put the little brother in timeout? 
and how yeah. he just really kept his composure. You know, he didn't sort of yell or explode or anything. He just, and he, but he communicated with the kid. You know, he said, hey, you got three more minutes, buddy. And yeah. that's just, that's a much older person there do, saying that and talking like that. Um, you know, to, and his parents and, and her parents, what we see that they came from, it's just amazing. You know, for that matter, when you look at the, the what we think the parents are like, Caitlin herself is also pretty awesome. Yeah, you know? so, both of them. Yeah. Both of them. I always think that they are incredibly mature. I mean, to the decision they had to make, they're incredibly mature. Yeah. And everything they go through, I I. I always have nothing but good things to say about them. They're just not interesting television anymore. But I have nothing but good things to say about them. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're impressive there. <clears throat> and then as you're talking about patience and parenting, you know who I was actually surprised by was Farah. Okay. Because Farah, she's very patient with Sophia. And I said surprisingly patient, and she's a really good parent. Because you see her with Sophia, and she's wonderful. Yeah. And then the second her mom walks in, she turns on that attitude. It's like she's so patient with Sophia and so impatient with her mom that I just don't understand it. But I thought Farrah's storyline story line this, ep- this episode was a little slow compared to normally. I mean, the boob job and the court battle and everything. Yeah. And this was kind of like, is she going to graduate from culinary school or not and her business project? Um yeah, I don't know. It, it was I thought it was interesting yeah. seeing her sister. I, have you ever seen her sister? I've never seen her sister. No, I did not. I did not see her sister. Um, they don't. They don't look alike to me. So I no. I've, I've never seen a sister. And she said that they don't. Really, they hadn't got, gotten along in the past, and that she's happy to have her aunt in her life. Yeah. I'm just happy that Farah has like a friend that's yeah. her age. Yep, she's got friends, and I, I remember when she went on the little hayride. She was. Uh, you know, saying that she was stressed out. And um, it's funny because I don't really see it on her face, her being stressed out. I, I can't really tell. But uh, but I believe her. You know, I believe stressed out. I mean, heck, she wants to move to San Jose. Where are they now? I don't even know where they are now. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Okay, and so when she said San Jose, she's talking about San Jose, California? <laughs> yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. That's, pretty, uh, that's a pretty not long trip. <laughs> Moved to San Jose and opened her incredibly original restaurant, S&S. S yeah. being for Farah, S being for Sophia. Yeah, and it's a, uh, what was it? Uh, was it Asian fusion and... Italian-Asian. Ita- Italian-Asian fusion. And then, and then the professor goes, you said there wasn't any of those, right? And, she, and he said, don't you think that's for a reason? I thought, okay, that's just, you know, that's ignorance on the guy's part. You, you know, it would be, if it's going to be good, then, you know... You 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 do it, but uh, but no yeah. no Farah Farah is uh, is you know she's like my my favorite one. I like her. I ha, think. Ha, I, well, no, I mean I think I think she has. You like her because she's hot. I well, but not everybody thinks she's hot. You know, uh, so what? I think she's pretty. No big deal. You know, she's uh, of age. I'm allowed. Um, I know. That's why you like her, because she's not. she doesn't have very many redeemable qualities when you see her with her mom. You like her because she's hot. Well, okay. Well, yeah, because when I see that to the mom, it's, it's a total you know deal breaker. But, um, no, what I saw this time was, and is, I saw what I, what I think is why she's that way, in a, in a way. I saw how annoying her mom can be for lack of a better word and I don't mean that disrespectfully to her mom but she's her mom has this sort of way of saying things that sound positive but they're just like they're they're said in like a an intrusive manner like she's insisting that she be happy when they celebrate at the dinner you know and she's oh please I'm telling her you mom is- so supportive. She's sitting there helping her with the project when she shouldn't have waited until the last minute in the first place, and then she's taking her to a congratulatory dinner. Well, I don't think <laughs> the mom may be a little annoying, but that is no reason to treat her that way, and the mom has been so supportive. She is fully taking care of her. Fully I, taking care of listen, her. Listen, so, I, no, I, I think I agree. said, I think I first said it's not an excuse, but I just wanted to say I saw a little bit more of the reason of why. And, I, you know, it's not an excuse to talk how she talks. It's no way. It's not okay. But, you know, it's it's like I, I tell my son all the time. I said, look, you can be annoyed with your mom, but you just can't let her know that you are. 
and it, because a person can't control what they feel. Something happens, you feel it. You don't know that you feel it until the feeling's there. So, you know, nobody should ever be ashamed of what they feel. She can be annoyed with her mom for the rest of her life. She just shouldn't let her know that um, because yeah. that that's the disrespectful part. But anyway, yeah, Farrah, um, I thought that her portion of the episode was like the lighthearted portion. It was kind of more comedy watching um, watching her cook and, you know, have it start burning. And get her, her acu- get her, um, not acupuncture, what was it? What was it? Oh, I saw something. That not- some- not a massage, chiropractor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it, <laughs> For stress. It, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it was more, um, it was the more lighthearted uh, portion of the show, so I agree. Yeah, well, I actually have some news and gossip as to where Farah is, and it's not San Jose. So, Jesse, you want to take us to a quick commercial break before we come back? DJ Jesse. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This yeah. is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. This television, and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's and Shakespearean. I, you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy... Ducky is a villain. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? <laughs> the wig! The wig will come out. That wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. After buzz. Okay. After buzz TV news. So, Farrah is not in San Jose. She's in Miami, Florida. So, I'm not quite sure what she's doing there, but she's there. She tweeted on Tuesday a picture of her with the Miami Dolphins, and she said, at Sunrise Stadium for Dolphins kickoff game, on the field meeting the team, go team go. And then she said, I will be at a lot of the games. And uh, so, she's relocated to Miami, Florida. Yeah, she got up. She's dating one of those dudes. That's what's going on. They apparently know about the show, too. They told her they were fans of the show, the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, whatever. They're fans of Farrah. <laughs> just like you are? <laughs> yep, just like me. Yeah. <laughs> um, my Macy news, I don't really think it's going to turn anything, but I guess there's always drama in her life. But um, she tweeted a photo of Bentley and Kyle in matching red shirts and matching buzz cuts, and they're both blonde, so currently they look, like, strikingly similar. And so some people are claiming that there should be a paternity test and that Ryan may not be the true father, but I don't believe that for sure. Okay, now this is where I would need a little bit of backstory. Was Kyle around? Before? So Kyle and Macy have known each other since they were like nine. I think they were like motocross friends, or and uh, they like met a long time ago. So they'd always been friends. Oh my That's god! All I know. So do so we think? Did know him? Do we think this is actually possible? I don't. I really don't. Okay. Because if it was, it would have been an issue earlier on than now. Well, that would be he a would, major he, twist. He sometimes. Bentley looks like Ryan, or no? You know what? Um, to me, so far, what I've seen is uh, it, she, he looks like her mom. I mean, his mom. That's what I've seen so far. Okay. But, um, wow. That would be a shocker. And then, quick Caitlin news. Um, Tyler's dad, Butch, was hospitalized with pancreatitis. Most likely, I'm guessing, because he's a heavy drinker and drug abuser. That's my guess, but I don't know. I don't know. So, we'll see. And then Amber, my Amber news is, so OK Magazine got an inside look into what her 90-day rehab in California is like. She's apparently been receiving a combination of meds, one-on-one counseling sessions, and group therapy. And she's starting to wean off the medication due to the progress she's making. And apparently when she entered on June 24th, she was assigned a companion at that point who's another young woman and the two do almost everything together. Well, uh, you know what? That's good because you remember one of the things that you appreciated about Farrah's story was that she's got friends and stuff. And so, you know, that's that's a, a really helpful thing if you have somebody that you can, you know, be close to and, and help you get a perspective on things. So that's good. Yeah, I agree. And then his brother, her brother, uh, Sean, 
says that he wants, when she's out of rehab, he wants her to move to Nashville, Tennessee, which is where he lives. Um, I don't know about that, but I do think she should move out of her neighborhood because clearly if she's been harassed and everything, she should get out of her neighborhood, which is in uh, Indiana. Okay, so that's fine and dandy, but what about the relationship with the daughter? I mean... Uh... I think Gary would be willing to move. Like, there have been reports that they were going to move to L.A. and whatever. I think that he'd be willing to move. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I just don't think they should stay in Anderson, Indiana. Maybe they got to get out of that neighborhood. Fine. Maybe we should maybe stay in Indiana close enough to the grandparents, but they have got to get out of that neighborhood. Yeah, so she's, she's already asking. Already were harassing her before her suicide attempt. Ugh. Wow. That's too bad. Yeah. Such a shame. And I know, Jesse, uh, we're going to wrap up here. Let me give a quick preview. I don't need my futuristic music. <laughs> but um, apparently Sarah gets a puppy wanting to hide it from her parents. Uh, Ryan, as we discussed, is contemplating court. And Caitlin feels bad she hasn't kept up with Carly. I don't know. I, that's like every week she talks about that. So I yeah. don't know if that's anything new. And then the one surprising thing I saw in the preview was Gary. Mm-hmm. who I thought has always been really supportive of Amber and Leah and has been a great father, he wants to do a separate birthday party for Leah because he doesn't want to be around Amber. And I found that really surprising and not anything at this point that yeah. she needs. She does not need that drama. Right, right. Well, um, but, y- you know, we I think we have to remember that Gary's a person too and he has to – he has to keep himself together so that he can, you know, be a good dad and stay consistent. And what I felt, I saw that too. It stood out to me too. But I felt like, you know what, there's a guy who's really either, it's one of two things. Either he's just fed up, he's had enough of, you know, and she, she's a big drain on his life energy. Or he's actually thinking that, you know, he, he would still, if he sees her and he's around her, he's going to still want to be with her and it's going to be like a whole you know, uh, destructive cycle. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to, I would, I'm going to reserve judgment on Gary for that, even though that may, may not be what Amber needs. I guess what he can't, he can't always be expected to give her everything she needs. Sometimes he's got to take care of himself. So yeah, my two cents. So we'll have to see what happens and what unfolds, but thank you for joining me this week, Ed. <laughs> thank you for having me, Mari. And uh, viewers, stay tuned next week, same time, same place. Thank you so much. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.